In this video, we're going to learn about brazing. Now, braising is a combination cooking method, and what that means is that we're going to use principles of both dry heat and moist heat transfer uh, for our braising method. So, uh, braising, we're going to start by searing uh, our product, uh, which is where our dry heat uh, application comes in. Uh, we're then going to cover our product uh, about three quarters of the way with liquid and then allow that moist heat to cook the product the rest of the way. Braising and stewing are really similar methods, and if you check out our uh, stewing video, you'll see that we're using the same ingredients, um, and the method is really similar. Uh, really, the big difference between braising and stewing is that braising is meant for larger or whole pieces of meat, whereas stewing is meant for the more bite-sized pieces. So in this video today, uh, for braising, we're going to use <clears throat> uh, chicken uh, leg and thigh uh, eighths. Uh, and then in our stewing video, we're going to use uh, that same dark meat chicken, just cut into those one inch bite sized pieces to highlight the difference. All right, so to get started, uh, I have my pan preheating. Uh, I'm gonna preheat this pan on about uh, medium, medium high heat. Um, I want a good amount of heat because when I put the chicken in, I really wanna get a nice uh, brown on the outside. While this pan is preheating, I can go ahead and put my fat in, because we should be mostly preheated. I'm going to use clarified butter, um, but I could certainly use um, rendered bacon fat or oil, uh, you know, whatever fat I wanted for my braise, but I'm going to use clarified butter. While this pan is finishing preheating, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to season both the chicken and the flour that I'm going to dredge in with just a little bit of salt and black pepper. Okay. I'm gonna check my pan. And I can tell that my pan is preheated by the look on the fat. Okay, so first, the fat has melted. Um, using an animal fat, it's going to be solid at room temperature. It's going to melt as it warms up. But just because the fat is melted doesn't necessarily mean that the pan is hot. Uh, for animal fats, um, it really only takes very little bit of heat to get that pan hot. I can tell because there's a shimmer uh, across the bottom of my pan when I swirl that fat around. I'm going to try to get this on camera for you. So if you look at the bottom of the pan, you can see how that fat kind of shimmers down. It's almost like the ripples of an ocean when I pull that fat down. I'll do it one more time for you. You can kind of see that like shimmery, ripply look in the fat. And that's what tells me that this pan is nice and preheated. Now that it's been off the heat for a second, I'm going to let it come back up. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my chicken that I have seasoned with my salt and pepper, and I'm just going to dredge it into my flour. And before I put it in my pan, I'm just going to give it a little knock on the side just to get any of that extra flour off. I'm going to lay it down in my pan. And can you hear that? That little sizzle, that's the final indicator that my pan is hot, right? If I would have put this down and I wouldn't have heard anything, I would have taken uh, the product back out and let it uh, heat up uh, a little bit more uh, because I do want to get uh, that nice brown <clears throat> uh, on my chicken, and I won't get that if I start with a cold pan. Uh, my chicken will kind of steam in the bottom of the pan. The other thing that's going to be really uh, important when we're uh, browning, this is going to be true uh, for braising, for the same process when we're stewing, uh, for sauteing, for grilling, whatever it is. Uh, when we're adding that brown, we don't want to overcrowd the pan. So if you look into the bottom of the pan, I have enough pieces of chicken that it's covering the bottom of the pan, but they're not touching, they're not crammed in there. Again, the same thing as if I would have started with a pan that was too cold. What would happen is uh, my chicken uh, would kind of steam and I would kind of get this gray, 
not crispy, not brown chicken. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and let this cook uh, until it browns on the one side, then we're gonna go ahead and flip it. Uh, just like a lot of our other dry heat methods, um, we're gonna look for some of those quality indicators. We're gonna look uh, for some browning starting to happen around the edges. We're gonna look for some juices starting to flow out of the chicken. Um, and also, um, we're gonna look to, that the chicken is not stuck to the bottom of the pan. If that chicken's kind of stuck to the bottom of the pan, it's telling me it's not ready to flip yet. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and give it another, another minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this chicken uh, browned and then we'll come back once this chicken is browned and go on to our next step. All right, welcome back. Our chicken is uh, nicely browned. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove my chicken from my pan. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna saute some of our uh, aromatics here. We're using uh, some woody herbs, some garlic, um, and we're gonna use carrot in our braise as well. So we're gonna go ahead and saute this. I'm just gonna sweat these. Um, not really, need, don't really need to add any color. Um, just wanna get these sweat, get some of that raw garlic uh, flavor cooked out. I'm gonna add in my final flavoring ingredient, which is gonna be uh, some whole slices of lemon. Uh, again, this recipe uh, that we're using today is just to demonstrate the braising method. Um, so not all braises are gonna use carrots or garlic or herbs or lemon. Um, you know, this is just a very, very simple braise to kind of demonstrate the method. And then the same method can be applied to a variety of different meats, to different flavors, uh, what have you. All right, so I've got a little bit of heat on my carrots. They've started to sweat a little bit. I can see my garlic is starting to brown just a little bit. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and deglaze with a little bit of white wine. And I wanna make sure that when I deglaze, I use a spatula or a wooden spoon to really scrape the bottom of that pan, really remove that fonds that we've developed on the bottom of the pan. All right, I'm gonna take my chicken pieces and I'm gonna put them back in to my pot here. All right, and then my last step is I'm going to add chicken stock and I wanna add the chicken stock until the product is about three quarters of the way covered. So you can see uh, in my uh, pot here that uh, the chicken uh, is just sitting out of the stock. Uh, it's mostly covered. There's just a small amount uh, sticking out and that's a really nice quality indicator for my braise. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring this back up to a simmer. Once it reaches a simmer, uh, there's one of two things I can do. I can choose to finish this braise in the oven. So what I do is I would cover with a lid and finish it uh, in the oven, um, or I could finish it on the stovetop, which is what I'm going to do for this braise. So I'm going to uh, bring this up to a simmer, cover it with a lid, uh, and then allow it to simmer uh, for uh, the remainder of the time it needs to cook. It's really, really important uh, with braising and stewing not to boil our product, especially when it's meat. Um, simmering our, our braise is going to make that really, really tender, um, shreddable meat that we're looking for in a braised product, whereas boiling is going to make those, uh, those muscles constrict, it's going to dry it out, and it's going to be very, very tough. Uh, so bring it up to a simmer and then either put it in the oven or finish it on the stove. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this heat all set uh, and let this simmer, uh, and we'll check back in uh, once our meat is the texture that we want. All right, so it's been about an hour and my chicken is nicely braised. Uh, my, when I evaluated it before, it was nice and tender. When I use my tongs here, I can kind of give it a little squeeze and see that it's nice and tender, but it's still on the bone. I don't want it to, uh, you know, be falling off the bone or kind of turn it into mush. That would have been over braised. So at this point, I need to go ahead and uh, finish my sauce. And there's a couple different ways that we can do this. Um, I'm gonna start by removing my chicken and carrots from my braising liquid. 
And I do kind of want to be nice and delicate when I do this. I don't want to break apart my chicken. And at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, strain my sauce. So this sauce uh, got a little lumpy during the, the cooking process. Uh, just some of those juices in the chicken came out uh, and coagulated. Uh, maybe some of that flour gelatinized. Uh, so uh, just to have a nice smooth uh, cooking liquid, uh, I'm going to go ahead and strain. Use my rubber spatula. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my braising liquid back into my pot. And now I'm going to adjust for thickness. Uh, there's a couple different uh, methods I can use. In our stewing video, uh, we used a slurry, which is a combination of liquid and flour that's raw. Um, in this video, uh, we're going to use a roux because uh, I want to increase the thickness uh, just a little bit. Um, so I have some cold roux that I'm going to add to my hot braising liquid. So I'm going to add the cold roux and then I'm going to use a whisk and I'm going to uh, pretty aggressively uh, whisk uh, to help thicken uh, that sauce. If I don't aggressively whisk, uh, I'm going to end up with a dumpling in my uh, sauce uh, instead of that roux dispersed throughout the sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and add my roux. I only need just a little bit. The sauce was pretty close. I want it just a little bit thicker. I'm going to whisk until that roux is completely dissolved into my braising liquid here. All right, I'm gonna bring this back up to a simmer and we'll reevaluate the, the consistency once it's reached a simmer again. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna taste for seasoning. I do think it needs just a little bit of salt and pepper. Seasoning's nice. All right, um, so we're just gonna wait for this to simmer and then we're gonna reevaluate the, uh, the texture. Um, so we talked about what to do if the sauce was too um, thin, right? We can add either a slurry, we can let the sauce reduce, uh, or we can use, like we did in this case, uh, a roux. Um, if it was too thick, we could use just a little bit of stock or water or wine um, or some liquid. Um, if it was a, a milk-based uh, sauce, we could use some milk if we wanted a little creamier. We could use any liquid just to thin it out a little further. All right, so we're just coming back up to the simmer. Go ahead and evaluate. All right, it's just on the light side of nappe, uh, but for for this uh, braise, I'm not upset about that. You can uh, use the braising liquid at whatever thickness uh, is desirable for you. Uh, I'm okay with a little bit of a uh, thinner uh, braising liquid for this. So at this point, we can go ahead 
and add our chicken and our carrots back into our braising liquid. some of our carrots in there. A little bit of our liquid. All right, so there you have it. Very simple braising technique. So let's review. First, braising is a combination cooking method. So we're going to use dry heat to brown our product and then moist heat to continue cooking our product the rest of the way. Next, the length of the braise depends on the size of the product uh, as well as the type of meat that we're using. Smaller pieces are going to take shorter amounts of time and larger or tougher cuts are going to take substantially longer to braise. Finally, when braising, we need to finish the sauce. We need to evaluate for thickness and seasoning and consistency, and then uh, apply the techniques that we looked at today to get a sauce that meets our desired uh, consistency and flavor.